Hello and welcome to Channel X TV. I'm Chris Dawson of Channel X and delighted to be joined by Neil Fairfield today from Patton. Um, welcome, Neil. How are you? Thanks, Chris, for having me. Uh, really well, uh, thank you. Uh, we've got over the summer now having a big push in towards the Christmas months, uh, working towards Black Friday and beyond. So for those that might not know Patton, can you just tell us a little bit about what Patton do and, and, and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis at Patton? We would love to. So Pattern is a global e-commerce and marketplace accelerator. So we ultimately leverage proprietary technology uh, and our own data sets because we know what sells. We sell over $1.3 billion worth of goods on marketplaces globally. And we use those insights to help basically partner brands grow. So we work with the likes of Fortnum & Mason, Nestle, North Face, Bosch, uh, to look at where across the complete digital commerce spectrum they should spend the next dollar or euro or pound for the best return. And uh, which, which channels do you operate on with these brands? Uh, well, we're majority on marketplaces for good reason. Now, if you look to 2027, uh, there's some stats say that 65% of all global e-commerce will run through the big four marketplaces. And there's been over like 500 notable marketplaces uh, grow in the last few years. So that's ultimately where people are going to be buying. And we want to make sure that we're there as well to make sure that our partners can uh, grow and uh, thrive in those very complex, very fast changing, very dynamic, very AI driven landscapes. Now, I know you, you get a huge quantity of, of, of data because you, you see all of these transactions. And I believe you've got some interesting insights to reveal, um, something that a lot of parents are going to be interested in, the, the, the back to school rush to um, New clothes, new satchels, new, new, new. I remember the, the delight at the beginning of the school term when you got that. In my days, it was a little tin box with your compasses, your protractor, your set square, your pencils, and everything. Um, but there's a lot that goes in, whether it's the uniform itself, the sports equipment, the lunch boxes. Really? And you can let us know when is the best time for parents to actually buy. This is where it gets fun because you can look at it on an individual product by product basis or you can look at it collectively. And, you know, the big insight here is, you know, the best time to get that whole suite of kit for people going back to school is actually in November. It's uh, not when this term starts, but you can go into specifics. And this is, again, go back to marketplaces. You think of it rather than just somewhere to buy and sell. It's a kind of living and breathing lens onto the shopping habits of a whole nation. Uh, and you can yeah, see if you want to buy the best, it's November. In this case, if you want to spend the most, it's going to be December. Well, so I thought you'd be spending the most in kind of August, September when the demand's highest and everyone's kind of got to buy for the new term. But it's actually December, you say? Yeah, it is December. I think maybe that's people who have worn through the first lot of uh, crayons and pencils in the you know the first term. They've gone in hard. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking it could be, and I know it's not as fashionable nowadays, but lots of people of my age used to get kind of the school equipment as Christmas presents. So maybe they're just capitalising on the, the, the Christmas trends and, and edging the prices up. Yes. Uh, but, but how does a parent kind of figure out the best time to buy do they do, do they just have to keep looking online is there anything else they can do or is it really just savvy shopping and buying throughout the year when they see a good deal yes i think savvy shopping and uh buying when they see the good deal is the best way to go uh ultimately what is interesting is we're seeing a rise of you know retailers actually helping buyers out given the economic headwinds we're facing. You know, there's certain companies uh, highlighting shrinkflation when it comes to mm. products, which I think is great. If you're a consumer champion, you're going to benefit in the long run. Uh, but I think, you know, when it comes to school products, especially, you're looking month by month as to, you know, when is the best point, price point to buy that product for your child. What sort of difference can people expect with the, 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 the price they pay? Can you give us an idea of sort of the, the, the difference between the highest price and the lowest prices? Yeah, I mean, if you look at this year as opposed to 2022, uh, there can be anything from 7 to 21% cheaper than the average price of the year. If you look at it individually, uh, you're looking at the likes of pencil sharpeners being you know, 4% cheaper, glue sticks 5%, marker pens 5%, sticky tabs 5%, shoes 6%, colouring pencils 6%, and water bottles 11%. Water bottles are the winner this year for some reason. Uh, they are markedly uh, cheaper than they were in 2022. In fact, they are almost like 11% cheaper than this time last year. Well, that's a massive 
differences in pricing then. So can we talk a little bit about uh, retailers? Because obviously, although it's been uh, tough for consumers, and we, we, we must never forget that, retailers have, uh, have also had a lot of expense come into their business, even if it's just energy prices and um, the, the rising cost of, uh, uh, of labour. So it's important for them to maintain their margins. How can they kind of encourage consumers to pay the premium price uh, and, and retain as much profit as possible? That's a very good point, I think. And as we looked at the individual products, there's not much uh, similarity in terms of the price differences. So what retailers need to think about is what are those products that are the must-haves or essentials? Uh, and then think about when other products are at their cheapest, can they bundle them in at the same time to encourage an increase in basket size to the benefit of both parties ultimately? Um, inflation has been rife, but I'm guessing um, kind of a lot of products that have just been sold over the last couple of months have been ordered probably six months, even a year ago. So are we likely to see prices even higher this time next year or is there like uh, likely to be some stability and i know you said things like water bottles have varied massively in price but what sort of outlook is there both for uh, retailers expectations on their cost basis and also for consumers when when they actually come to make purchases in 2024 i think that's the multi-million dollar question yeah, uh, sorry it's a tough one if we could work it out we'd be in a very positive position no i think we can look at the data today, uh, and I think anything further forward than that is a little bit speculative. I think given the economic headwinds with the country, especially UK, looking to go into recession, there's going to be squeezes on people's budgets. So people will always be looking for the best possible product at the best possible price. Uh, but in terms of how to deal with it in the future, it's going to be, uh, you have to wait and see how it pans out. And for retailers, well, we've obviously been talking today about kind of back to school, school uniform and accessories. Have you any insight as to how it's playing out in other categories? Are there any surprising categories that haven't seen huge inflation yet? Are there some categories that prices also wildly vary throughout the year? I think we're still seeing... Uh, if you look at the data, you can actually start seeing around event inspired shopping occasions. So you can see things such as, you know, large weekends, seasonality, Christmas is still benefiting what you'd call like the celebratory categories, such as beers, wines and spirits. But across the board, uh, there's not been consistency uh, because of the huge global logistics supply chains that actually affect significantly products independently rather than categories as a whole. Mm. And I think it's easy to forget, we all think of the big events of sort of Brexit, pandemic, etc., war in Ukraine, but there's been so many other events which have had a knock-on on supply chain, like the Suez Canal when that got blocked by Evergreen, <laughs> what's that, two, three years ago now, but it's still still having ongoing ramifications. Um, so, Neil, looking at retailers, how can they best and take advantage of buying trends what tools are there out there and in fact what tools do you use internally to actually manage the data on behalf of your retailers yeah well we've got our own proprietary patented uh, kind of data platform and what that can do is look at the patterns across all well, it's actually over 300 million products across 5,000 websites globally. Uh, and obviously the dominant shopping destinations being marketplaces, we can start seeing you know, what people really want, uh, how they think when they search, how they're changing their search kind of behaviors to be more considered rather than direct to certain products. We can kind of track consumer confidence when it comes to you know time selected to time bought. And we can also look at identify events and occasions. You mentioned previously about the Suez canal blockage and supply chains but I mean looking back historically uh, when we had the four day bank holiday weekend for the Queen's Jubilee a couple of years ago now I mean we really celebrated that in the UK and you can see massive spikes in beers, wines and spirits all the kind of party affairs so you can see how that happens and ultimately you can see cultural trends that manifest itself, manifest itself into shopping missions you know you can start seeing the likes of the phenomenon that is the Barbie uh, film knocking into things like fancy dress and 
ultimately what's most fascinating is you can actually inform early stage new product development uh, based on near real time data, uh, which is great when it comes to advising large enterprise companies exactly how to maintain share when it comes to digital shelves and digital products. So this is really interesting, and you, 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 you're talking about data patterns, and I'm, I'm guessing that's where the name of the company comes from, that you've got this overall view view of the data. For people that want to find out more, um, what services do you offer for retailers? Do, 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 if, if I've listened to this and I, I, I want some of those insights, where, where do I go to find out more? Oh, to find out more, well, what happens is we've got a blog on our main site where it comes together a lot of the data that we see and packaged into insightful reports for people to download and then obviously activate themselves. Uh, there's everything from, you know, serious topics such as four tips for European e-commerce expansion, three ways to supercharge your e-commerce performance, but also the most important things such as, you know, who buys more pet supplies, would it, dogs or cats owners ultimately? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to go download that report myself because um, <laughs> the, the perennial who spoils their pets more, I think, rather than who buys more for them. So, in, interesting, and um, we're, we're, we're coming into October now. So, if you are still looking for school uniform, um, best advice probably keep an eye on prices, but hold off because November's coming up fast. But don't leave it too long because December you'll be paying a higher price again. Exactly. If you are to go into the market this month, I've got to give you a top tip of exercise books and glue sticks, which are great months for buying at the moment. Uh, but yeah, hold off to November until they get the best overall package. Fantastic. Neil, it's been fascinating. Thank you so much. And just for people watching, uh, the Pattern website can be found at pattern.com pattern.com go to look at their blog for a whole load more data and insights neil thank you so much for your time today no problem thank you for having me